remember Tampa The way she used to be The places we would run to The faces we would see Yes, I remember Tampa With precious memories A city rising on the moon a simple yet progressive groove so I remember Tampa She remembers me Welcome to the Tampa Native Show Stay tuned now for the fastest 60 minutes in cable broadcast history Live from the studios at TBCN The home of the Tampa Native Show Join your hosts, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl and Steve Canella As they celebrate growing up in Tampa from Shock Armstrong to Shakey's Pizza, from Braddock Street to Buffalo Avenue. Get ready to call in and tell us your stories, because sharing your memories has never been this much fun. And now, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella. Hi, Tampa Native Show fans. Welcome back to this, a very special edition mm -hmm. of the Tampa Native Show. You know what, what makes this show special tonight, Steve? Well, we have a very special guest for one thing. Of course. And with a lot of music history. Um, which, Make that reveal right is, up at yeah. the front. Make that Why reveal. Not? Why not? Yeah. Well, we tell them who it is. We didn't tell them who it is yet, but it is Charlie Souza. And you may know about one of his groups and several, he was in several groups, I believe. Charlie's been in music He's, since he, for a long time. Oh, a long time. He'll tell us about He's that a, in just a, a little music bit. legend, really. So just, just wait. Just that way, Steve. Look at Stevie, man, making a pitch. <laughs> exactly. All right, the other thing exactly. special about the show tonight, I'll tell mm -hmm. you what it is. Okay. Is that we're taping it early, man. That is another thing. Yeah, it's kind yes. of, you know what, it's, it's almost like when they empty the stadium mm -hmm. of all, the, you know, the, you don't have a live crowd, man. Right. You're, you're playing mm -hmm. in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this show tonight, anything but in a vacuum, because Charlie's here, and Charlie's going to tell us all about it here in just mm -hmm. a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to take any live calls tonight because we are not live. But you know what? It feels like we're live. It does, because here we are at 7 o'clock just like normal. Mm -hmm. And you'll be watching this, of course, Thursday night at 7 o'clock, right? I and agree. hopefully by then we'll be able to report that the, <laughs> that the, 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 the uh, Lightning are up 3-1 to one on the Chicago Blackhawks. And you know what? That, what that means, too, is we can actually watch our own show the day after. And we will. Live. Maybe. Kind of live. We've, <laughs> got, we've got an event to attend tomorrow night. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the wrestling. It's, it's, it's the event for the Jewish Community Center. Mm -hmm formerly known as Fort Homer Hesterly Armory, and they're having an event tomorrow night, mm -hmm. a fundraiser, because they're doing something very, very grand mm -hmm. and very nice for all the right. families to represent that wonderful era from the 50s to the 80s, uh, all of those wonderful matches on Tuesday night, Gordon Soley and with the names of Eddie Graham and the great Malenko, and a lot of them are going to be there uh, tomorrow night, and we're going to go in, in attendance. So that's why we can't be exactly. here live on Thursdays. All right. Last week's show, as always, will follow immediately after this show. Mm -hmm. Give them the channel, Stevie, for the follow. That channel is 638 on Bright House mm -hmm. and 36 on Verizon. That's right. 638, yeah. right? 638. 638, 638 for, for the, the live. replay. Right, right. All right. Let us remind you also that on the 20th, Ebor Stories mm -hmm. with Richard DiPietra. Mm -hmm. Tickets mm -hmm. still available. Right. Jump all over that. Got to get there, Stevie. Got to get there. That's I want to be a good that. show. All right. We'll do that. And one more thing, and then we're going to jump right into this with Charlie Sousa because Charlie's chomping at the bit. We want to hear his stories, man. He's right there. You can hear him laughing. All right, so listen. We talked about this last week. We'll mention it again. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in joining us and helping us to kind of recast, refurbish, repaint, reanimate, if you will, mm -hmm. those wonderful Lowry Park Fairyland storybook figurines, which the city of Tampa is mm -hmm. still housing, we need to hear from you. Send us an email. You can send us an email at goodtimesattampanativeshow.com. That's, our, of course, our email here at the show. Or you can send one to me directly, tampanatives at verizon.net. If you can paint, if you can clean, uh, and especially if you have some experience working with fiberglass, because some of these figures, they've been exposed to the elements now for the better part of almost 40 years. Wow. They're all there. They just need some TLC to bring them back to life, okay? So we want to do that. Hopefully, Mr. Richard Gunsmart will take some of them and maybe display them That'd at his Goody Goody restaurant. That would be interesting. Or possibly uh, some of them will end up at the uh, Tampa Bay History Museum. It's a part Museum. of our history. It really is. So that's it's a great. part of all of our childhood. You know, before we had the mouse, Stevie. I know. That's we all had we Lowry had. Park. Lowry man. Park. That was our mouse. And that's all they had at Lowry Park, man. You go over the Rainbow Bridge and you were in Fairyland. Hey, we're reaching a new milestone. 
On Tell the, me. The Tampa Natives group on Facebook, we're reaching 6,000 members. Hey! We're at 59, how about that? 6,000 members, 5, that's where we were before mm -hmm. Facebook changed their rules. Right. And we had to start all over From again. Stevie, how long has it been, about two years? It's been about two and a half years, actually. To get back up to 6,000. To 6, get back 000. up, right. We would have 12,000 members by now. Man. Can you imagine? That hadn't happened. But All right, Mr. Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, thanks for not charging us, okay? Because, you know, true. you could be a real <laughs> bad guy and decide to charge us. But we appreciate you leaving it free for us. Thanks. All right, so as a means of introducing you to our guest tonight, our guest of honor, mm -hmm. Charlie Sousa, we've got about a seven-minute video that we want to show you. They had a reunion of the tropics in 1999, which is hard to believe that it's been mm -hmm. already 15 years since wow. then. Oh, man. Wow. 15 <laughs> years since the reunion, okay? So we're going to show you that video Great little historical compilation, tell you a little bit about mm -hmm. the tropics, the genesis, and, and, what Char and how Charlie was influential in getting all this started. And then he'll be in studio with us to tell us even more. So enjoy the video, turn it up nice and loud, and uh, we'll see you in about seven minutes. It was so joyful back then. The blend of music and talent together that just clicked. It's kind of nice to go back and revisit spots that you had before. I think we all just care about each other. It's just great to, to see the guys again and to talk about all the times that we had on the road. It was a great time. No, I wouldn't trade it that time for the world. It was great. The Travis got started um, with me and a guy named Ron Ferrer. We were in about the sixth or seventh grade and we decided to put a band together. He played clarinet, I played guitar, and we played at our parents' parties. It was the early 60s. Clarinet was cool. Young men's hair was cut to a respectable length, and the Fab Four, all of that was about to change. By 1964, the Tropics were experiencing some success in the Tampa Bay area as a six-piece horn band playing R&B. Buddy's parents, Harden and Peggy Pendergrass, had financed the recording of their first album, pressing 100 copies for family and friends. And local television had honored the Tropics as High Time Band of the Year. But their first break into the big time came when they auditioned for future managers Margie and Dick Sexton, owners of the Silver Star Skating Rink and the area's hottest night spot for teens, Surfers Club. The deal was you audition and play at the skating rink. If you go over, well, then you get to play at the Surfers Club. After playing the Surfers Club, I got a phone call, and they said, we're considering managing a band, and we really like you guys a lot, but we're looking for more of a Beatle group, but we'd like to take you guys on if, if you'd be willing to make a change in your style. So the horns went, along with some band members, and the beginning of 1965 saw the management team of Margie and Dick Sexton reshaping the trough with Buddy Pendergrass, Mel Dreyer, Eric Turner, Bobby Shea, and Charlie Souza. Dick Sexton showed us how to do steps. He used to come in our rehearsals and tell us about what this band did and what that band did. We wore matching suits and learned how to bow like the Beatles. My husband and I, we would just rehearse in the clubhouse, and they were so young that they would just do anything we would ask them to do. At that time, you know, you, you couldn't just go out there and play your, you know, all originals. So we we decided, well, we'll we'll do the cover tunes and uh, try to do them as close as, as we could to the record. We were just basically, you know, local. Um, act that uh, wanted to get national. We were the house man at the Surfers Club. That's when we really got our start, uh, you know, getting real serious about uh, the band, maybe getting a hit record and making it big. It wasn't long before the Tropics began to climb the charts in the East with original material. I was elated when, when I heard uh, I Want More on the radio. We wrote that with Phil Gernhardt, who wrote a lot of other hits with different bands. It was a lot of fun. There were a lot, a lot of fans. And a lot of girls and groupies, everybody was in love with one of them. So each wife would have their hands full. They were just so good. Their music, uh, they looked good. Their personalities, they just shined on stage. I mean, they had it all. They really did. They knew they were headed somewhere. Five guys ready to set the world on fire. And the world did sit up and take notice in July 1966, when the Tropics entered the International Battle of the Bands and won. We left Tampa thinking that uh, this is a big deal. It's getting national publicity. 439 that, from around the world that are going to be in this. We took a train to, New, to uh, Chicago, and uh, we got off the train to get a soda, and then the train left with all our equipment and luggage. We spent the night at a, at a 
railroad hotel with holes in the wall. We all had paper watts because we could throw them at the rats when they came up in the hole. So we had to wait till the next day to catch the train. I was at Surfers Club that night and I just knew in my heart they were going to win and when I got that phone call, it was incredible. We all had stars in our eyes. <laughs> And so we, we just thought that was the beginning. And it basically was in a lot of ways. We got a recording contract with Columbia. We saw our record played on Dick Clark's show. American Bandstand, they rated it. I think it might have got a 90 or 95. Had a good beat and you could dance to it, right? We thought at that point maybe we would uh, get that hit record we always wanted. Lack of a hit record on the national charts was not for lack of trying. The Tropics were recording and playing concerts with major acts, but the very exposure that kept their popularity afloat in the Southeast may have been what drowned their chances of hitting the big time. No one could touch us live. We were playing sometimes over 300 one-nighters in a year. It kept us so busy that when it was time for us to record, even though we had uh, Columbia Records and, and breaks like that, I think that we weren't able to capitalize. We went to New York in 68. We uh, played at Steve Paul's scene on 47th Street, and the uh, McCoys were playing there, and the Doors were playing there the week before us. And, and we were next up, you know, on the list to play that next week. And so I thought that was it. So why didn't New York catapult the tropics onto the national music scene? We went home. <laughs> we came back to Florida and jumped into our old, you know, routine of going around the state and playing at Teen Town. As the 60s came to a close, so did the tropics. In 1969, they decided to give up chasing that elusive big break and go their separate ways. But they never completely dismissed the idea of getting back together, if only for one show. Well, I just wanted a Tropics reunion about 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> he, wanted, he always wanted the band to get back together. <laughs> Now, with music still revered by fans and sought after by collectors, the Tropics are ready to do it again. Their 30-year reunion concert will feature not only their past hits, but two new songs, Still Get a Chill and Live Your Dream, both fitting for the occasion. Putting the show together has meant coordinating the schedules of five busy lives from Florida to California. But now, like before, it's been a labor of love. There's a lot of love in this band. It comes out in the music. The Tropics ended at, at a time when maybe they could have gone on and done something better. So now they get to enjoy what they didn't finish. <laughs> I don't think we'd ever broke up if we knew then what we know now. We, uh, we look back on it now after 30 years and, and uh, we didn't realize at that time just how much fun we were having. We want to relive maybe just one night. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed that little video because we certainly did here in the studio. Look who's sitting right here oh, to my right. Shucks. Welcome, Charlie, Charlie. Souza. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so thanks, much for being for here. Having, thanks for being here. Of this course. Is great. This you is know, awesome. I really appreciate it. No, no, this is Thank what you. we do here at the Tampa Native Show. We talk right. about growing up in Tampa. We talk about that wonderful time in our mm -hmm. youth. And, you know, we've had other uh, musicians uh, grace our desk before. <laughs> and, and, of course, tonight, Charlie, we're going to get into your background and and the history of the tropics. But what a wonderful time it was growing up in the mm -hmm. 60s in oh, Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. Music was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's bands all over the place playing, you know, everywhere you look, all over the state of Florida. You know, there was Rodney and the Justos, I mean, and Rodney and the Mystics, and, um, you know, the Outsiders, Ronnie Elliott, and mm -hmm. all of our friends. Y'all your pals, we're, we're, man. You guys were yeah, contemporaries. Yeah, we weren't in competition. We were just having fun back sure, then. Right. You sure. know, before the music business became competitive, right. mm -hmm. it, was, it was so much fun back in the 60s. It's like a social network in a way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but, you know, it took a while. Before to, cell phones exactly. and before the computers. Exactly. Listen, and we were talking about, you know, when they were showing the video, you guys in 69, yeah. maybe arguably mm -hmm. a little prematurely gave up the dream because, yeah. you know, you yeah, just yeah. figured maybe that was where it was going to end. Well, actually... If you knew then what you know now. Oh, no. Yeah, well... <laughs> you I know, mean, you guys had it going on. Yeah, well, there was a, a, a trend in music as well, and things were getting heavier, and 
uh, Jimi Hendrix came along. Right. We, were, we were in New York City, and right. Eric Turner and I were listening to, you know, Purple Haze on the jukebox, mm -hmm. and we're thinking, man, let's grow some beards and play that <laughs> stuff. And um, what happened after the tropics, if I can move on, uh, is that Eric and I started a band called Bacchus. Bacchus is right here? And um, Right there into that camera. Full circle, Bacchus is going to have a record release on the first song on this album next month on a, on a uh, record company in California. And the name of the album is going to be the Brown Acid Compilation. There you go. And Bacchus is coming back out next month. We so have a picture of that too. Number things, six. Yeah. So things so things it, that are old come, or new again. Mm -hmm. Come full circle. So uh, yeah, Bacchus had a nice little run, you know, in the early 70s, 71, 72, 73. Bill Peterson was our drummer, and Eric Turner was like, pfft. he played Jimi Hendrix just like Jimi. Um, so left-handed and backwards. Yeah, Outside well, down. not really, but <laughs> huh? at any rate, sure. um, uh, you know, we we had a lot of fun, and then of course Greg Allman calls me and says, you know, uh, you know Barry Oakley died on his motorcycle, and we need a bass player, so uh, he came and picked me up over in St. Pete where Bacchus oh. was playing, and gave me one of those gold uh, mushroom pendants that mm -hmm. said Allman Brothers on it, and I went and up. We're to, in. I went up to Macon with Greg. And it witnessed his wedding. He he married uh, the Heartbreakers bass player's sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, then we went to New York, and and Greg was a little weird, you know, about his brother. He carried his brother's guitar, and he would open up the case and look at the guitar and say, "This is my brother's guitar." And he was kind of you know wigged out at the time, and I can't blame him. You know, sure. he lost his brother. Yeah. But it was too much for me to handle because, you know, I was some innocent guy that I didn't even drink, you know. And From Tampa, Florida. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Greg was doing all this other crazy stuff. So I ran off and joined Cactus, uh, the new Cactus band on Long Island. Um, and we toured around with, like, the Bob Seger band. And, sure. uh, you know, we had a, a good little touring thing going on. And... Um, you know, that, that, uh, that was fun. We didn't record any records, but then, full circle again, my friend Buddy Pendergrass from the Tropics calls. By the way, this is out now. And this is, oh, good. This is, this yeah. is nice. This is great stuff. Yeah. I love that. Again, all, things that are old or new again. Vinyl yeah. is now having it's a bit of a resurgence. resurgence. Yeah. This, this was released in 2013. Wow. And it's all the original recordings. Of great, the tropics. Great album. And I'm really proud of this because they released it in Europe and I don't blame you. The uh, And um, as as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, <laughs> the 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 Meet the Beatles uh, <laughs> album cover was you know it had a great deal of reach, range and uh, ramifications. Look at it, because everybody wanted to of course everybody wanted to be the Montrose, I man. know. That's a great they so, set the bar high. So Buddy album. calls me in seventy four and he says, you know, we have this band called White Witch and we want to record down in uh, <clears throat> Miami, mm -hmm. Criteria Studios. Mm -hmm. So we did this album, 74, and, and I Remember had, the band members of this album as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, you know... Wasn't Bill Peterson with you on this Bill one as well? Peter, I brought Bill Peterson in on drums sure. because, you know, uh, Bobby Shea was playing bongos or congas, and, um, of course, you know, Buddy, uh, he, that was his band, and he wrote a bunch of great music. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really honored to be in that band. Um, but I had, I had to, a good run too. I had to call Eric and say, Eric, I, I can't be in Bacchus anymore. I got to be in White Witch. <laughs> I got to go home, man. Yeah, Tough decisions. I got to go home to Florida. I know. So, uh, you know, we'd go down. Bacchus used to play at Dino's Bar and Grill on Dale Mabry. Sure. Remember that? Yeah, Dino's was the place. And th man. That's where the Blues Image used to play with well, Mike, course, Mike and Mike Panera, yeah. And, and my buddy. Uh, Joe Lala was in there too, wasn't he? Joe Lala, yeah. My brother Joe. He Joe played on this album. This is my. Uh, oh, great Joe Lala. <laughs> That's my Living in Paradise album. Uh, I just uh, put that out and, oh, it's only been a matter of six or seven years ago. Sure. That's, that's <laughs> and how nothing. quickly that time goes. Yeah. Charlie. And how I, quickly I it goes. brought you guys each a copy. Oh, how nice. Oh, thank you very much. And it works great as a Frisbee, too. Thank you. Um, it's fantastic. Or you can hang it from your rearview mirror. Yeah, yeah, you can hang yeah, it from yeah. your rearview mirror. So, uh, you know, what I did, I... Thank you, Charlie. I, thank I know you. I'm, thank blabbing, you. I'm blabbing a whole lot, but... No, you, no, that's, no, fine. that's good. You fine. asked me to. I brought a bunch of show and tell because 
you know, after 50, you just forget everything. That's what we do here. No, the best way to do it is to yeah. have those little talismans, <laughs> have those, because that reminds you, it's a memory job. Yeah, and yeah. We've got pictures to go through as well, so we're going to do that. But okay. Let me, let me back things yeah. up just for a minute, because yeah, Charlie, I, want, I want everybody to know that you are indeed a Tampa native, and you mm -hmm. are indeed one of us from here, born mm -hmm. and raised. So <laughs> where were you born, Charlie? Where did you go to elementary, junior high, and high school? Oh, man. You know, I was born on MacDill Air Force Base. There you go. That's, there you our, go. that's our first guest ever being I think you're right. born yeah. on, on mm -hmm. the base itself. And, um, you know, of course, my mommy took me home, and mm -hmm. we lived in Port Tampa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. south of the mm -hmm. railroad tracks. Sure. And, um, you know, we used to throw tangerines at the trains that went by. So you worked on your arm? Oh, uh, yeah. Accuracy, your pitching yeah, arm? exactly. <laughs> so yeah. you were a SOG, a South of Gandhi. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely a SOG. South Tampa survivor. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they used to have a skating rink on Gandhi Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's where I, I broke my shoulder. Shoulder. shoulder? Yeah, oh, wow. skating backwards, trying to. Act. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Being cool. That's not good. Being cool for the girls. Yeah, that, that happens. You know. You got to do it. You yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I anybody mean, can skate forward. <laughs> not, not really. Well, you know, you try skating backwards. Skate backwards. You know, yeah. you break your arm and you know. <laughs> pick up a base. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, okay, so junior high, elementary, and high Junior school? high, ooh, Monroe. Well, elementary? Monroe. Monroe really? Elementary, West Shore Elementary. Atta boy. Shore, That's where I was in this. Uh, in that first band? This, my first R&B band was the uh, minstrel show. Uh, let's, oh, let's show that picture. picture number two. Let's show back the picture in. number two. We, we can even jump back to number uh, number one in just a second. But picture number two, I want to definitely, Charlie, I wanted to give you the opportunity to explain yourself here. Because oh, we, yeah. saw this, <laughs> we, we saw this picture today, and I said, you know, we never go even That's close cool. to that politically well, incorrect <laughs> Third rail. Well, but I said, you know, there's got to be a good story behind this. Well, and it, you know, then it wasn't very politically correct, or now, it, whether yeah, it is or not, it doesn't we, matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but I was Mr. Interlocutor. Okay. And I, and I was in charge of all the guys with the tambourines and, you know, Tambo and Sambo, and mm -hmm. they all had uh, paint, the painted faces, mm -hmm. and we all <laughs> sang, you know, songs. And I'd tell them to sit down and stand up and play. And so that was my first band. Oh, wow. And you are the gentleman in white here. Uh, yeah. yeah. You are the, the band leader. The little guy in white, yeah. There you go. That's <laughs> and so that was West Shore Elementary. That was West Shore. That so was, was this part of, like, say, a talent show at the time? Yeah, because yeah, remember, we talent did. shows were being popular back Oh, then. we did the, I forget what they call them, but they had the auditorium. Yeah, talent shows. They yeah, always had the, the, yeah, the shows there. and Talent contest. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so so this is in, in West Shore Element, and... and this picture here, was this already junior high? Were you a little bit older here in picture no, number that's, one? That's picture same one. time period? Uh, same time period. My sister played violin and I played... Show that picture. Look at that picture right there. I played clarinet. It's my sister, Ruthie. Oh, look at that. And Great that's photo. me with clarinet. And, um, you know, clarinet is, is, is cool. Clarinet's cool. Pete Fountain. <laughs> Pete Fountain. Pete Fountain. <laughs> Pete Fountain. And then follow... And then, but if you once you learn to, you know, blow over that top of that reed, the saxophone is a natural progression, right? I know. Because the clarinet is usually... When the marching bands, the clarinets were usually the girls. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And the saxophone mm -hmm. was usually the boys, usually, I say. Sure. Doesn't mean that the boys couldn't play the yeah. other ones. Yeah, or the yeah. girls couldn't play the saxes. Yeah. But... That's just how it broke down. Well, you know, when I was a kid like that, I was so skinny, and my name was Sousa, so they tried to put, make me play the, the Sousa, Sousa phone. phone. Ah! I put the thing on, it was way too on, heavy, man. You over. It was way too Jerry, heavy. That's fine. I, I, I was too skinny. I couldn't hold but it But you up. could see why it would be natural for them to want you to play the ah, Sousa well, I played Your the name was Sousa, I know. Right out Claire, loud, Charlie. Clarinet. Madison you know, and Monroe. It was meant to be. That Madison and Monroe. Mon Monroe Junior High. Monroe, the Rebels. Uh -huh. Monroe Rebels. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, nice. then I went to Robinson. Nice. And, uh, of course, I got in some rock and roll band called The Tropics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I started skipping school because, yeah. you know. We had things to do with Charlie. We were too cool for school. Too cool for school. Yeah, you know. So, anyway, that answers your question. So, The Tropics, they were, they were all Robinson students? And that was a great oh, question, no, Stan. No, we had uh, Plant High School was Buddy and Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, Robinson was... My best friend, Mel Dreyer. Hi, Mel. There you go. Hey, Mel. Mel, Mel and me were mm -hmm. at Robinson. And Bobby Shea, the drummer, he was mm -hmm. somewhere over in St. Peter or something. Oh. But before that, the horns, we had Wayne Guida. Hi, Wayne. And, uh, <laughs> and they're watching. And them. Ronnie, mm -hmm. Ronnie on uh, sax and um, Spencer Hinkle. Yep. Now, he's he's a local talent. He's still going strong and writing some really we great stuff. We know Spencer, stuff. sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Spencer's a good buddy of the show. I've been calling. I bought a stand-up bass, and I, I called him up and said, hey, you need a bass player, Spencer? 
haven't heard back yet. Mm -hmm. But hey, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> what we need to do, Charlie, we, you know, we, we should mm -hmm. somehow, maybe by fall, put, put something together, like a little review or a little, you know, where some of these, you guys can just come out and play. You the know, Tampa Native Band. Yeah. Wow. Let's do it. That has a good sound to it, doesn't Charlie. <laughs> I think you hit that, something there. <laughs> I think you definitely hit on something right there. All right, let's... Uh, Rodney. Yeah. And, no, no. Rodney and Robin Elliot. and Roy Garcia. Robin, Robin and Roy. Oh, Roy's a great guitar player. Roy guitar player. player. So, yeah. I mean, you know... Uh, we, we go watch them when they play. Uh, Cuckoo Cachoo is, is their band now. And oh, so, they're great. Yeah, we listen to them. You get Bill Peterson to play a couple of drum he's usually He's usually at mm -hmm. those shows. Oh, yeah, wow. he's he usually is. at those shows. He is. Yeah, yeah. So they're still around, man. We just I need know. to get everybody together. It's like family. Yeah, Mel and Old I, times. every, every other oh, yeah. Saturday, I take Mel down to the Pancake House where mm -hmm. we used to go after gigs. Mm -hmm. And Mel and I have a piece of pie. <laughs> And we laugh and we talk about the old days, and it's like we're acting like kids again. Isn't that great? Yeah. Though? That's just the best, it's best, the best thing. thing to have a great friend, you know, lifetime friend mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nothing so, better than that. A shout out to Mel and Jan. That's, That's awesome. Thank you, Mel and Jan, for watching tonight. <laughs> um, you know, that pancake house has been the scene of the crime for how many years? I went there years? when I was uh, 18, I mean, 19. I know. Generationally. I you know. know. Generation. It's been in business over 50 years. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, how many late night breakfasts have. After the gigs, everybody's there. Yeah. But we, we would leave Mark Twain's yeah. disco and go there. Yeah. Three o'clock yeah. in the morning. Or the High Life Fronton. Or after 2001. The or the, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't think I went there. Exactly. No. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm man. That's just a, kidding. No. <laughs> so, um, graduated from Robinson. The tropics were in your life already. Yeah. And then from there, it was a, it was essentially one music oh. gig into another. It was and, Bacchus, and that's how you White started. Witch. That was the evolution. After White Witch. Tom Petty calls me. Hmm. Yeah, you, you mentioned that name. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that I'm familiar with that yeah, guy, but I, yeah, man, Tom Petty and is the like, he, our, he's like the Florida Beatle, I call him. <laughs> he's, ama know? he's amazing. He's yeah. amazing. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. And he's a Florida boy. You know right. that, right? That's Gainesville, right. right? Gainesville? Gainesville, yeah. Mm -hmm. We played there with Tom, and uh, we drove across the country, and his band then was Mud Crutch, mm -hmm. and so I was the bass player in Mud Crutch because Tom wanted to play guitar. Mm -hmm. And couple of the cuts are on this thing here, uh, playback. Hmm. Couple it's like about a 12 CD oh, compilation yeah, it's there? Oh there's some, some old mud crutch cuts, uh, don't do me like that, mm -hmm. uh, lost in your eyes and stuff like that. Wow, um, you're familiar with Tom Petty's music. Oh yeah, yeah on, you yeah. know, I have to throw that in there because maybe mm -hmm. somebody will call me and give me a job. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're always looking for that. I know. We're looking for work. Yeah. So, so then, Let's let's uh, let's show some of the pictures, Stevie, because, yeah, because we we've got so many. We do, and uh -huh. we're at the bottom of the hour mm -hmm. already. We don't want to leave oh any of these God. pictures Sorry out. About and that. we've got no, 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 no we're doing great. Book, book. We're doing great, and we've <laughs> got. We also have uh, some questions that we fielded today, yeah. so mm -hmm. we're going to ask those we do have in between those. some of these mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah, I was saying. Go Becky, ahead and show three yeah. A, and we can talk all about exactly. that. Look at this photograph exactly. here. Can you please tell us a little bit about this? And I've got an email that goes with. Let me read this to you first, Charles. Oh, okay. Let me read this to you first. Yes, sir. This comes from. I put my glasses on. Leave that up there back so people can enjoy this. This comes from Robert D. Floyd, and Robert Floyd writes, I see you're having Charlie Sousa on your show. I've never met Charlie in person, but he and I became Facebook friends because of my Bay Area Vintage Rock Facebook album. He said he may or may not recall who I am. He says, I've always wanted to know the year this photo was taken. It is obviously pre-Tropics, and Charlie is even the guitar player and not the bass player, which is his claim to fame. Can you ask him the year for me, which I just did, Charlie? And then he says, thank you, my friend. Oh, he may have this photo in his presentation. If not, surprise him with it. The coachman in oh this God. photo from reliable sources, left to right, are Paul Lynch on the drums, Charlie Sousa on the guitar, John Doty on the guitar, and Tim, Tim Cleary, Cleary on the bass. Oh, my wow. God, yes. Yeah, so, Robert D. Floyd, thank you so much for sending that in, and now you can answer the question wow, from Robert Floyd. Man. What year was this picture, would Robert, you reckon? That was 1963. Wow. And we were trying to learn the Peter, Paul, and Mary stuff, and it wasn't coming out right, so we figured we'd switch to playing Ventures stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's right before I went to um, my senior year, or my junior year at Robinson and met Mel Dreyer. Hmm. So that was on MacDill Air Force Base at the uh, teen center on MacDill. Wow. Wonderful. That's Robert, we hope photo. that that answers your question. I know that uh, we were excited to get this picture, and when you sent the uh, email to us, we just jumped all over it. So That's crazy. Thank you, Robert, and we will certainly make sure that uh, 
Charlie gets this gets picture, picture to that. add to his collection. Mm -hmm. So wow. thank you for that question. All right. Too much. Let's go to the, the next picture is the album cover, which did we show that a few minutes um, ago? I think we did. I like this. That's I, great. I just like this image. I could look at it for a little while longer. And and go around left to right, show show those, uh, talk, introduce that's, everybody uh, in the band. That's Buddy Pendergrass. He's the founder of the Tropics. Bottom left. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Shea, the drummer. Mm -hmm. And there's Mel Dreyer, the lead singer, and he plays this tambourine. He finally put a... Mm -hmm. Uh, pinball uh, 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 to spin it around so he wouldn't cut his finger ah, off. Ah, like a little flipper from the pinball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and there's Eric Turner next to Mel, and there's me with my little beetle thing. There you go. Oh, there a, you go. That's a, a great, what a great, great uh, image. Cover. The next photograph, Becky, is also another shot of the tropics. You guys had it going on, man. Look at you. Well, you know, we had to wear ties and suits to make mm -hmm. us look like we were important. Or, and, or to make you look like you were 16, because no, you were exactly. probably, you know, at the time you were 14. Well, we, pro we, like, we copied everything the Beatles did. Oh, who didn't? That was hey, one of the things the Beatles did. <laughs> yeah. So what the heck, you know? No, that yeah, was great. Yeah, the black background with the black shirts or the black jackets. Matching yeah. ties. Matching ties. Jeez. Yeah, we've well, got a lot of the doo-wop bands coming out of the... The 50s, and you know, oh, they, yeah. they, everybody had matching ensembles, so of it course. wasn't a stretch. No, mm -hmm. uh -uh. no, everybody did that. It wasn't mm -hmm. really until the Woodstock and then forward that people started to go. You know what I mean? It wasn't oh, really yeah. until that era that yeah. you know people just started to dress differently. But mm -hmm. up know. until that point, everybody kind of you had a uniform. Oh, absolutely, you had a band uniform. I know, I and know. you look good. Yeah, yeah. Next up. photograph, Becky. I, I like this one too, Charlie. What were you doing here? Oh my goodness, that's a great that's, photo. That's a recent uh, picture. That's uh, from the St. Petersburg Times or the Tampa Bay Times. A photographer came out and took a picture of me at the beach because I'd written that song called Carry Me Back to St. Petersburg oh. and, you know, won the song contest that uh, Mayor Baker had run. Okay. I have to hear that. And, Rick uh, Baker, sure. That's the first cut on that CD. Oh, good, good. I can't know, wait that, to hear it. That frisbee. No, no, we're not going to frisbee this. <laughs> As a matter of no, fact, no. we'll listen to this on the way home. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I will. Yeah, turn it up to 11. Very good. <laughs> Anyway, that's where that one's from, the uh, St. Petersburg Times. And, and that competition was um, uh, citywide? How many entrants did you uh, uh, out duel? You know, the numbers are kind of, I don't recall exactly. I think I got... But it was only for original mm -hmm. compositions? It was for people yeah. to submit their mm -hmm. original yeah, songs? Yeah, a bunch of friends of mine, guys wrote songs and sent them in. And, you know, I was lucky enough to have won the thing. That's so, great. Um, yeah. Because... Joe Lala played on it. Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and you know, yeah. we, we, that's one of the two things that we still. We lost a legend there. Yeah, we, yeah. I, we I never was I able know. to get Joe I, to come I on can't the show. get over it, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't get Rick Caceres before right. he left us, too. Those right. were two of the big, big heavyweights yeah, yeah. that, man, we weren't able to get either one of those two. Luckily, but Joe, I think Joe, listen, Joe's presence every once in a while, oh, you he, know, you can just he, sense him in the studio, especially on shows like tonight when we're talking about music. He's laughing at us now. And. <laughs> and, and oh, by the way, we, we got him inducted, Stevie, into the uh, Jefferson High School right. Hall yeah, of Fame was, here recently, too. Way so to go. This is, this is way been to go. Well good, it's, it's good times well for us here mm -hmm. at the Tampa yeah. Native Show. Did we show the Bacchus image? Oh, the Bacchus. All right, very we good. Did. Let's go to the next one, then. This was, um, yep, number seven, picture number seven. That's Margie Sexton, the manager of the Tropics. And all of the Tropics, what is that, 32 years later? Uh, 1999. 99, yeah. Oh. We were... Psh, you know, uh, Eric and I lived in California, and I was flying us out here to rehearse. And you know, it was like we had to do this. Mm -hmm. sure. We had mm -hmm. to do it, brothers. And then after this reunion, it was like, hey, man, I got to do more music. This is mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's when my solo career started with mm -hmm. recording with uh, um, the drummer from uh, Robin Trower. Mm -hmm. Robin Trower's drummer. Mm -hmm. I did a couple of. Solo albums, where are they? Solo albums. There they are. You felt the inspiration after Live that. Live your dream yeah. well, in nine ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. The neat part about it, I think, more than anything else, and we talk about it here mm -hmm. on the show, mm -hmm. this show that we do is a fond remembrance and a fond look back at a Tampa that arguably no longer exists. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. but, but it excites us because when we get together with our fans and they mm -hmm. call us and we get to talk about it, yeah. we're in that moment. Yeah, right. and it's a special moment. It takes you back. Well, it, it feels music good does, inside. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Good inside. That's what I'm it's getting at, Charlie. So yeah. that's what the music mm -hmm. does for you. Oh yeah. So when you're in that moment, yeah. brother, mm -hmm. you're 16, 17, 18 years old again. You're 25 again. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. when I hit a bass note, um, it's like I'm 18 all over mm -hmm. again. There you go. You know? 
That's but dumb. then I go home and look in the mirror, and <laughs> no, it's that, just not true. Then you get true. up the next morning, try to tie your shoe without stretching. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you step out of the shower and slip a little bit, you go, wow. Yeah. What, what was that? Well, it just try bending over and feeding the cat these days. <laughs> Jeez. And we all know about I've that, had, right? I've had that Steve's yeah. got cats, <laughs> we got cats. <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's, that's great. The next photograph, Becky, is a good one also. It's the tropics as well. I think it's right about the same time, if I'm yeah, not that's, mistaken. Yeah, that's at right? Apple Studios. We were in rehearsal, and we thought, well, let's take another picture. Because mm -hmm. that's what you're supposed to do when you're... When you're all together. Rock star. That's right. You take photos, man. <laughs> and you work. Photos. You all work. I like this next picture here, the Sunshine Man. I like this one. Oh, Sunshine Man. That's a uh, Ma Maxfield. Uh... Becky, did we skip one? Oh, no. This is this Pic is one I put in the last minute. This oh, came oh in. Oh, my God. This no, came no, well, in today. You know, that's a fan from... Uh, mm -hmm. from uh, I forgot Red, who sent Red it. Stick, Red Stick, Louisiana. What is that? Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. And he came and saw us and took that shot and gave that shot to me uh, about six years ago when I was playing there with uh, the New Rascals. Yeah, someone sent that to me today just before I left. The oh, house. that's good. Steve, yeah. you captured and brought that, it in. I sure so did. Cool. Nice job, IT department. Oh, yeah, you got nice it. Nice job wow. on the fly. On the ball. Yeah. <laughs> now we can go, now we can maybe do the Sunshine Man. Do you want to see, is that when the next uh, one is That should be next. Up? Yeah. Look at that. that. Oh, it looks story. very Peter Max, by the way. And it is Peter Max's art. Go. And, and <clears throat> the, the Al Kasha produced this, who is a huge you know, hit record producer. Now, the funny thing about this is, is my best friend Mel, I went over to his house last year, and he said, oh, I've got that acetate in the garage. And I go, oh, dig that out. And his wife, Jan, you know, I kept bothering him for six mm. months. Dig out that acetate. <laughs> so they finally gave it to me, and I digitized it. And I released it. It's up on iTunes now. Oh, nice. And it's like a recording that nobody has ever heard by the Tropics. Hmm. And it was just something exciting for me of to course. do, just to release it. And I told Mel I would make him a big star. So there it is. Oh, nice. How cool. That is great. And it's available <laughs> on iTunes, man, mm -hmm. so we can see that right oh, absolutely. now. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sunshine Man, the Tropics. That's great. Very I good. Um, let me read a question. Let me let me bring out another I've question because these too. nice people took their time they to sure send did. in the question, so we don't want to leave anybody out. I'll read the first one, Stevie. You can read the second yeah, one. Yeah, let's do that. This one comes to us from Barbara Eddins. Barbara Eddins writes, "You opened up for what national acts in the '60s? You opened for what national acts in the '60s? And what were some of the names of your bands, which we've already covered?" Mm -hmm. Thanks, mm -hmm. Barbara writes. So, what a acts did you open for in the '60s? Did oh you goodness me! For? You know, things stick in my mind. I, I remember playing at Curtis Hickson and looking behind us while we were playing and watching the guys in the Rascals watch us play. There you, you know, go. we're doing our little steps, and and there's Felix and Dino there back there. There you go. That's one of the bands. Now, good loving. There are so many other ones. Uh, one comes to mind is down in Miami, and we were playing on a, a stage that was floating on the water, and there was like water and then the, the audience. And so we opened for The Who, and we played our stuff, and The Who wanted to borrow our mics and our uh, mic stands and, and our, uh, our pedal, guitar pedals and stuff. And you know what the Who does when they're done? They break all that stuff. They threw all of our equipment in the water, oh, man. No. <laughs> Are you Did they at least cut you a check, Charlie? Did no, you no, no, you no, no. Peter Townsend come out and no, but you know, Roger Daltrey stroke you a check. We did record a song called "Summertime Blues," right after that, mm -hmm. and we hooked up with the Who's manager, our manager, Margie Sexton, hooked up with the Who's manager mm -hmm. and sent them the copy of our "Summertime Blues," mm -hmm. and who released that about six months later? The Who. You know gone. "Summertime Blues." You know, yeah. you heard the, you know that. <laughs> well, no. You yeah. know the song? No, if no. You hear the. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. Oh, that's a different one. That's a different yeah. One. Okay. What's the hook there, Charlie? The hook? The hook on that song. Oh. Give it. There ain't no cure for like the, the summertime blues. Absolutely. That's what yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 I, I had the summertime uh -huh. blues. I had the, yeah. the first part of that Darn. I needed. You know now why? you know the song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's on that album, I'll too. Be damn, Charlie. <laughs> I re recorded great. the songs because, you know, they mean a lot to me. So mm -hmm. I sang them myself, you know. Sure. Mm -hmm. And sure. I, I called upon me, myself, and I to do harmony because. All three parts. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, you can do that now. It's a free we have the technology available. It was <laughs> free, you know, to hire myself to sing <laughs> uh, And easier to manage. Stevie, read yourself. this question here from Melissa Crabb. That is, uh, this is, uh, what's your favorite memory from the early, from early in your career? Your favorite oh, memory you of all? Do you have a, uh, one, one hallmark memory One from hallmark early? memory is like anything, something or? that when we were rehearsing in the Surfers Club, and, you know, we were learning all the Beatles songs, and... I, we'd take breaks from rehearsal, sure. and I, I would go outside 
and I would walk on that white sand on the on Madeira Beach, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I would watch the pelicans fly by, mm -hmm. and it was like it was like heaven. Mm -hmm. It was like I just had a totally clear moment when I walked out on the beach and looked out over the water. You know? So so profound so, that you, you think of it now. Oh, I, yeah. I you know I lived in California mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. 27 years, and I could not wait to get back to the white sandy beaches. Nice, you know, that's you know. nice. It does really. It, it it's mm -hmm. yeah. It's transformative, man. Oh yeah. Uh, we you know like what? Well, as often as we can. As well, well, it took one or two earthquakes out in California <laughs> to, to get, get you back, back home. home. That helps. <laughs> right. Woo. Yeah, because that's another thing. You know, you <laughs> can plan for a hurricane. You can get your preparedness uh -uh. kit ready, and you can no. go out and get your water and uh -huh. your canned goods and whatnot. Yeah. But when the ground starts to shake underneath you, man, there's just it's a little different. nothing like that. Yeah, when the TV jumps in bed with you at 6 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that's when you go, baby, <laughs> pack the wagon. It's time to go. This, this question comes to us also from the interwebs. Mm -hmm. uh, Cynthia Russell asks, how did you happen to work with Tom Petty, and what was that like? You oh kind of touched goodness. on that. So oh, wow. Tell us how Tom, I mean, you said well, Tom was a good guy. You know, Tom was, in, Tropics used to play Gainesville a lot, and that's where Tom was from. And he was like a kid, like 13, 14. He used to come and watch the Tropics play. So is he a little play. bit younger than you, Charlie? Yeah, okay. yeah, about two years, three years, I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he'd watch the Tropics play in Gainesville. And then when he got out to California and he needed a bass player, he called me to mm -hmm. play bass for him. So... You know, well, he called my manager, Marjorie Sexton, where's Charlie? And I was playing Dino's with Dacus, you know. <laughs> and, He's uh, not here. Yeah, so anyway, um, that's how I got started with Tom. I, he, he sent the equipment truck by my house in Tampa, and we loaded all my furniture in the back of the equipment truck. Mud Crutch drove across the country. You know, we ended up in Tulsa at Leon Russell's house. Yeah, Leon had a... 40 track studio in the wow. basement. Wow, what memories. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Russell, what a story. Time. You know, mm -hmm. and I just took all this for granted because mm -hmm. I was like, you know, you know, I had my cat. I had to worry about my cat <laughs> in the car, you know. Well, it was what you, you alluded to it in the, uh, in the video that, you, uh, that we showed at the top where, you know, uh, the fellas were in Chicago. Mm -hmm. They won the competition in Chicago. Tropics, and, uh -huh. and you figured that that would be kind of the jumping off point for you guys. And, and, yeah. and since it didn't necessarily happen that way, because you guys were from Tampa and you guys were just homeboys, you said, right. well, you know, let's just go home, man. What that's, are we going to do? That's right. That's right. And like I said, we played um, all the same gigs that we had before we went to New York. So, Yeah, 300 out of 365 days worth of gigs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm thinking, I, I, you know, I'm just going to take a leap of faith here, but I'm thinking part of the charm... Okay, mm -hmm. of being from Tampa mm -hmm. and being a Tampeño. Uh, you know what I mean? Being a tampe homeboy, being a Tampeño mm -hmm. from Tampa. Um, be it from south of Gandhi, being a South Tampa survivor or from Ebor hey, City I, or Seminole Heights. I've got tam Heights. Tampania mania, man. There you go. <laughs> and I like that too. <laughs> we may have to put that on the next shirt. I like shirt. that. Tampania mania. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, but it's part of our charm too because we don't ever, I don't think we think or we're raised to think uh -huh. that we are maybe deserving of that big break or that big limelight so that if it doesn't necessarily happen to us in a, in, in a time frame that's uh, yeah, in it, agreement with us, it's okay. we just go, it's okay, it's man, so, we just it, go home. It's okay. We I just mean, go home and we still have a dinner at our mother's house or our grandma's right. house. You know that's I mean? right. Yeah, and it says a lot about us. Come, it, come it full circle. I told you the Tropics played at Curtis Hickson and we watched the Rascals, yeah. Rascals watching us play. Mm -hmm. I get a call from one of the rascals in 2007, or was it six? And I go to play with Gene Cornish up in uh, mid-state, and then he put me in as bass player in the New Rascals with Dino Dinelli on drums mm -hmm. of the Rascals. And I'm pinching myself thinking, wait a minute, you know. It, How did this happen? You know, God's doing all this. I had nothing to do with it, right. you know. But it, it's like it's such an honor to have played with Dino Dinelli. You know, we, we were together for maybe five years, the New Rascals. Sure. And then they started talking about this reunion thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're still involved in their reunion, which is a beautiful thing. But it's nice to have those guys as friends. Mm -hmm. I think the excellent part about being a musician is the fraternity that develops, you know, with you and the guys. Yeah. Okay, it's, sort of, it's almost like being an athlete. The difference, I think, is that, you know, the athletic skill will eventually wane. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, where you, the music kind of, you can do the, look, the rockers just got back from Cuba, man. Those guys are in their 70s. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you can time. do that. You can still do music, yeah. man. Uh, yeah. You know, you like I said, it. when you play that certain note, 
you're 18 years old. That's, a, that's and, wonderful. And that fraternity is, is uh, very uh, deeply embedded, too. You know, it's, yeah. it, it lasts a long time. Yeah. Especially you know? when you couple mm -hmm. that with being from Tampa. Yeah. There's just something right. special, Charlie. That's true. About growing up here in yeah. that time. Uh -huh. In that time. Exactly. Because Tampa was very small, man, and we were all connected to each other. I wouldn't have it any other way. Not a boy. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I got another question for you. This uh -oh. one comes from Thomas Richmond. Yeah. Hello, my name is Thomas Richmond from San Diego. Charlie was to mention, Charlie mentioned from a friend of mine, Barbara Eddins. Barbara, we read her question earlier. <clears throat> the question from me would be, mm -hmm. how or when did you come in contact with Tom Petty? I think you answered that, and how was your experience? I did. So yeah. we did. Thomas, thank you so much. I'm going to go to Nancy Clark Bloomer's question. Okay. Nancy writes, hello, please ask Charlie about how and when he got started. I think we've covered that. Also, I'd like to know what song did they play to win the Battle of the Bands, and what year was that? Oh, my goodness. Any other awards for the band? Thanks. That's from Nancy Bloomer. Thanks, Nancy, Great. for Thank you, Nancy. offering that question. Well, you know, it's really hard to pull memory out of your brain sometimes, mm -hmm. but that was 1966, the International Battle of the Bands. Mm -hmm. I recall playing Black Jacket Woman, which mm -hmm. is on this album right here. The anthology. <laughs> Very nice. Black Jacket Woman was one of the songs, and I, I think we did a, like a Kinks cover or... Uh, Tired of Waiting, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't remember the other songs, but Black Jacket Woman was Black one Jacket of, Woman. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and those things, they do stay with you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because all you got to do is kind of go, close your eyes, it was 66 in here, and then just <gasps> open, the, open, the, open the key. Yeah. Let those memories come flooding back to you. Steve, you got a question? Yeah, we do have one. This is from Matthew's photos. In fact, he's the one that sent that photo. Mm. Um, Charlie, Oh, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, my question for you is, uh, what was it like to be in the tropics way back in 1969? And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this one. How about uh, the St. Paul's 1969 prom in the Coker Room of the Municipal Auditorium? Uh, LOL. Laugh out loud. <laughs> laugh out, laugh out mm -hmm. loud. Right. Yeah, buddy. So St. Paul's <laughs> 1969 prom. Uh -huh. That's where that in picture. In the Coker Room. He sent you that picture from that. That's what. It, that's where. It yes. Was. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was a picture. That's. that's yeah. The location. And, and okay. that's where he. We, you know, we first met there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I was pretty aloof as the bass player. Mm -hmm. You know, floating around playing bass. But he came to a gig that the New Rascals did, mm -hmm. uh, and gave me that picture. Oh, that was nice. That was a great, great photo. Thank well, you. Well, we bring we bring people together here at the Tampa Bay do. Show, don't we? We sure do. <laughs> and that's part of that's part of the charm of our show. It's I like, think. It's like this is your life. Uh, and it is. It's Charlie's life. <laughs> what a life he's led. Look it at is. all this stuff here. You now, listen, we haven't talked. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> we haven't talked about this yet, but oh, um, Stevie, where's, where's Charlie's book? Here it is. Oh. And we've got how many minutes left, Becky? We don't want to run over. About 10 minutes left to go. Okay, this book that Charlie has brought tonight, including the CD that Charlie has given to each one of us here in studio, is going to be um, uh, a gift signed and a gift to one of our lucky bolita drawing winners for next week now for those of you that are watching the show remember we taped it on wednesday night thursday night it will air uh and for those of you that sent in these wonderful uh questions and i'll read the names again there's one more question i've got to get bonnie jean and uh, i have one Kreese. more here too online oh, you do okay mm -hmm. so i just want to make sure that we all of these wonderful people that send in your questions please submit a lucky number between one and 75 lucky number lucky bolita drawing number between one and 75 what we'll do at the end of next week's show is we'll draw that number mm -hmm. we'll draw a number and uh, if you happen to be the lucky winner we'll send this to you okay charlie will sign it yep submit it by email to us at goodtimes at tamponativeshow.com there it is right there goodtimes at tamponativeshow.com just like you send in the question mm -hmm. follow it up you can put that in your subject just title lucky number and then the number of your uh Choice between one and seventy-five. That'd be great. Steve, you got a question? Yeah, we sure do. This is from uh, Cass Cass Bruton. Uh, he he basically writes: um, When you are beginning as a musician and not yet successful, it seems to me that non-musicians and sometimes even family members will tell you not to go into that line of work. Um, they may not understand it at all, or they may worry about about the lifestyle, the health, um, or your ability to support yourself. Um, you know all of that, but basically. But if it is your calling and you have to go with your passion, is that right? And, and so how do you deal with people in your life who sometimes discourage you as to you know, what you want to do or even disparage what you do? And also, would you mind giving some examples of the musicians you worked with as well? We got the musicians we worked we with have before mm -hmm. and quite a line of musicians. Did, did, did you experience that? What he's, what he's, <clears> did well, somebody ever try to talk you out of it, Charlie? You know, one thing comes to mind. And is, this, is that Cash? Ca what? Cass Cash Cash Bruton. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just uh, learned how to run away from everybody 
And they knew what I wanted to do. There you go. I listened to people, but I, actually I didn't. Mm -hmm. Didn't listen to anybody. I just went with... You gave them the time, you followed I, I your hooked, instincts. I right. hooked up with the people that I thought I, I wanted to hook up with as I went. There you go. You listened so, to their advice, but you, you did what you thought was, was right. Yeah, I went mm -hmm. with my heart. Right, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. another fabulous trait <laughs> of somebody being born and it's raised Tampa, in Tampa. <laughs> listen, I'm not going to disrespect you and not listen to you. Uh -huh. If you want to tell me something, you know, you mm -hmm. have an aunt or you have, you know, your cousin says, hey, man, you sure you want to do that? You may starve. You know, you, you're not yeah. good enough, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Respectfully. Right. And right. then what the hell are you gonna do anyway? That's right. <laughs> because well, you had because you had the talent, right. Charlie. I mean if you well, didn't have the talent it would have been a different story. I think you knew in your heart mm -hmm. that you could play. Well, my mother played piano and you know, I heard music before I was born. Mm -hmm. So there you go. uh you know, it's it, it, it was it organic, runs in the brother. family. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And plus look, man, it was the mm -hmm. times we were living. I mean, back then in those times of the nineteen sixties, you wanted to be a part of that. It was either look, it was either athletics. Mm -hmm. Or music it wasn't athletics for me. But I'm saying it was either one of the two because <laughs> um, my sister in the '50s brought home every Elvis record, mm -hmm. and boy, was I doing like uh, Jailhouse Rock, by Jailhouse Rock, like 1958. I was ready go. to sing, you know. There you go. Warden through a party at the county jail? That's it. Ah, okay, and we got some pictures to go. Can we, we do. Can we uh -oh. get through these last group of pictures, Becky? Just run through them real fast. Yeah. I mean, you might want to start with number 10, because we got we got about 10 here to go, but we sure would like to show these images. Can you, Beck? Oh, that's the poster for the Tropics Reunion in 99. 99 I love that poster. The Tropics Reunion poster. The next one I thought was rather interesting as well. I like this next image also. Oh, that is the um, death of a salesman photo. Mm-hmm. And that's the flip side of Sunshine Man, Salesman, uh, the, the Tropics that was on mm -hmm, that. Uh, mm -hmm. I just like that image. I think that's very, very cool. That acetate that I got out the, of the, the other Mel's acetate, Garage. Mel's Garage, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That goes with Sunshine Man. Yeah. All right, the next. Curtis Sixth Mall. Look. Oh, oh cool. yeah. And Paul Revere and the Raiders. That was our first gig with uh, Dino, Des Desi, and Billy, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, right there. And Tommy Rowe. And, yeah, that was our first big gig at Curtis Hicks. Ah. Next image. I think this is Dino and Charlie. Well, yeah. After we toured as the New Rascals, they started the Rascals reunion tour, and that's when they played in Ruth Eckerd. And I went backstage, and Dino hands me all of his artwork. He's an <laughs> artist. Mm -hmm. I handle his uh, website, dinodinelliart.com. And he handed me this big stack of things that he paintings and stuff. And I'm sitting there scanning them for the next three or four months going, hey, Dino, do you want to show this one? Huh. So we have a very artistic tie still. Mm -hmm. And is, mm -hmm. is your website, is some of this information available on your it's website? It's all on charliesouza.com. charliesouza.com. You can throw that up there, Becky, anytime. time. Yeah. And, and if you want to run through the next couple of pictures, because we're rapidly coming to the close of the show, and I don't know where this hour has gone. I don't either. Mercy. Oh, Mercy. That's, that's a DVD recording that we did for the New Rascals. That's Eddie Brigatti of the Rascals, the lead singer, mm -hmm. and me and Gene Cornish on guitar, and then Dino Donnelly behind. On Gene. the drums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next image back. It, it, the the fellow on the far right, uh, that's Bill Pascali. Mm -hmm. He toured with the Vanilla Fudge for about five years okay. over in Europe. And Gene and Dino called him up to do the uh, the New Rascals gig. So he sang and played the B3. And the gentleman with the tie? That's uh, Gene Cornish. And okay. And Dino's on the end. And that's, of course, me in the middle. With Absolutely. The NR, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Charlie, where are you playing here? Oh, that's the same. Uh, that's the Same gig? The DVD shoot in uh, New Jersey. Okay. Bill Pascali and myself. And there's Dino and me. There's Dino, and there's me. Dino I, on the drums. You I can see him there real good. I can't ever get enough pictures of Dino <laughs> and me because, you know, he's been my... Abbey Road, I, man. Oh, I went over there to do that photo shoot for my album called Live Your Dream. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. That's great. <laughs> sure. That's awesome. It's right that's, here with us. That's the flip side. That's the back uh, cover. Name of the yeah. book. Name of the song as well. Name Live Your song. Dream. Yeah. Charlie, we may just we may just have to make this a two part show, man. We may just have to bring you back when I we know. come back. Uh -oh. Two more pictures. Let's get through the last two okay, pictures. Okay, okay. No, for sure. Yeah. Well, there's a lot. Who's of, there with you? You know, that is Manhattan Transfer's uh, Tim Tim Hauser. Now he recently passed away, but the Manhattan Transfer, uh, he bought my house in L.A. from me, so we we became pretty good buddies, and he wrote a a uh, endorsement for my book. He said. Uh, all of Charlie's music is still in the beams of my house that I hmm. bought from him, you know? Wow. So, uh, 
you know, I, I was sorry to hear that he passed. Yeah, but, man, uh, Manhattan Transfer had a good run, too. So they good. were wonderful. Well, they're still going, they're still and there. that's mm -hmm. been my favorite jazz vocal group, yeah. uh, Manhattan Transfer. And I was really honored to have known that's amazing. Jim. Yeah. Charlie, what an amazing experience you, you've had. And, and <laughs> I mean, how many people you've met over the years? And Oh, yeah. That's the music just, industry, though. Well, that's why I'm so dizzy. You know? That's <laughs> the music industry. I think that that's the, <laughs> that's the joy of being yeah. you know, mm -hmm. a talented musician. You get mm -hmm. the opportunity. Rodney said the same thing when he was here. He's the first one that'll say, you know, he's the luckiest man alive because mm -hmm. he just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And, you know, sometimes I know the old adage about mm -hmm. it's better to be lucky than mm -hmm. good, but the, be, the reality is you got to have the chops, man. Every you time we went the to the Atlanta mm -hmm. airport, there was Rodney sitting Going waiting somewhere. for our next flight, you know? <laughs> Going somewhere. Yeah. Just yeah. the connections, you, you know, you built over the years. And that's yeah. just, it's wonderful. And to yeah. still be active in it mm -hmm. today is good, too, because it yeah. keeps you, again, if you don't mm -hmm. use the parts, man, they start to lock up oh, on yeah. you. So you got to stay fluid. you got to stay limber. Yeah. Uh, music allows you the opportunity to do that. That's we want to make sure that everybody remembers mm -hmm. Charlie Sousa's uh, website, which is charliesousa.com. It's real easy, charliesousa.com. Mm -hmm. This show will be up on our website just as soon as we can. We can't put it up there too soon because we can't put the show out there before it airs tomorrow night. That's Although true. Although you could. Possible. Oh, well, you, maybe. I mean, if you could preempt tonight, the show, that's, but we won't do okay. that. That's I know it's kind of weird because we're in this little time warp thing. We're I doing know. the show Wednesday, but it's actually going to show on Thursday. Charlie, I just want to say what a treat it is, man, to meet you in person. Oh, well. Same I've here. heard about you for a long, long mm -hmm. time. I apologize. All good, brother. All good. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you for bringing these wonderful things to share with our fans tonight. Well, sure. Anything you want to just throw out there and just say in, in closing to our fans well, as Steve's, phone, as Steve's uh, watch is going on? First of all, I'm honored to be here. Thank, thank you, you two for thank having you. me. Uh, it, it's like it's wonderful to keep the memories alive mm -hmm. of Tampa, and that's what you guys are doing. So um, I get to throw my two cents in, and, and it makes me feel good to be here. It's Charlie, you're a part pleasure. of it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? You're, you you created those memories that we celebrate each you're and every one of week us. on our show. So are we going to do this? Yeah. yeah, we're going to do it in just a second. You bet. I just want to say that um, I'm going to race out of here, Stevie, mm -hmm. as soon as we get done. Uh, I'm not going? even going to pick up from the studio. I'm just going to leave immediately <laughs> to, to find a TV because, man, I, I think the lightning oh, is going to do it tonight. I know. You know? Oh, I I hope I'm you. becoming a big, oh, big man. hockey fan. Yeah. So I, I just hope that tonight's a good night for them, and then they take the Series 3-1, and then anything. You, you have know. to go to one of those watch parties, too. No, and next year, we may put a group together mm -hmm. to go. we got to. And, have, and yeah. Charlie, you're going to be there with us. Man. Can I, I play bass? I promise. Of course you can. All right. All right, listen, let me just say that, Again, ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the close of our last show of the season next week, please bear with us and be with us. Let me just say thank you, Becky and Todd, for doing what you do each and every week. On behalf of the rest of us here, I'm Mighty Nunez. There's Steve, Steve Canella. And here's Charlie Sousa. Salute, Salute and happy, happy days. days. We love you, Tampa. See you next week. You, Tampa. Bye now. Bye-bye now. Hola. Back when we were younger And everything seemed new we used to have a lot of fun, yes we did, no matter what we do. Sleepy days, long summer nights, going anywhere we please. With love that I could call my own, love that I've always known. The city that I call my home, a home from which I never roam. This love affair was meant to be, I love her and she loves me. I remember Tampa. She remembers me She remembers me Tampa Native Show.